In today's funny story, we bring you a story about a haunted closet and a very cornered carpenter. Imagine a very particular housewife, Agatha Huckleberry, being very annoyed with a creaky closet every time a bus goes by. She decided to call in the help of a carpenter to fix this ghostly problem. Agatha Huckleberry clutched a pearl necklace in one hand and a phone in the other. The rhythmic creaking coming from the closet was enough to drive anyone batty. It wasn't a constant groan, mind you. No, this was a symphony of shudders and squeaks that only erupted when a double-decker bus rumbled past their house. Agatha, a woman who prided herself on a well-maintained home and a perfectly curated accent, some might say, couldn't take it anymore. Hello, Bernard's Carpentry. Yes, this is Agatha Huckleberry. I seem to be having a rather peculiar situation. Every time a dreadful double-decker bus rattles past the house, my closet door sounds like it's auditioning for a haunted house tour. Oh no, dears, it's quite sturdy. Mahogany, you see. But the noise, it simply won't do. Could you possibly send someone over? Bernard's Carpentry, known for their motto, We Fix Anything, even if it's possessed by a polka-dotted ghost, a marketing ploy that surprisingly worked, dispatched their finest, Harold, a man with a perpetually worried expression and a toolbox that seemed to hold the solutions to life's most bizarre problems. Mrs. Huckleberry, Harold here from Bernard's Carpentry. Ah, Harold. Do come in. The dreadful noise originates from the linen closet right there. Harold peered into the closet. It was a typical linen closet, shelves crammed with neatly folded towels and Agatha's extensive collection of doilies, some crocheted by hand, some suspiciously store-bought. He tapped the walls, prodded the shelves, even sniffed the doilies, a habit he was trying to break. Nothing. Hmm, seems sturdy enough. Can't say I see anything out of the ordinary, ma'am. But surely you heard the racket just then? Here, wait for the next double-decker. They come every ten minutes, like clockwork, the dreadful things. As if on cue, the rumble of a bus engine filled the air. Agatha and Harold stood expectantly. Suddenly, a loud creak reverberated from the closet, followed by a clatter of falling doilies. Harold jumped a foot in the air. See? Did you hear that? Harold gaped at the closet door. This was one for the, we fix anything, even if it's possessed by a polka-dotted ghost hall of fame. Well, this is a puzzler. Perhaps if I... Goodness, no, you can't possibly climb in there. Ma'am. I've dealt with rogue rocking chairs, possessed rocking horses, those things are terrifying. Even a haunted grandfather clock that insisted on playing disco at 3 a.m. in the morning. A noisy closet door won't phase me. Now, if you'll excuse me. Harold crawls into the closet, Agatha looking on with a mixture of disapproval and morbid curiosity. Inside the closet, Harold contorted himself into a pretzel, dodging doilies, and trying to get a good look at the creaky culprit. Minutes ticked by. Agatha fidgeted and then went into the bathroom. At exactly that time, Agatha's husband Bartholomew arrived home from work earlier than usual. He called out to Agatha as he enters the house. Agatha, my dear, I'm home. Bartholomew, not getting any response from Agatha, walked upstairs, wanting to get a warm jacket, as is his usual routine, from the ghostly closet. In the meantime, Agatha, knowing about the carpenter in the closet, rushed half-dressed out of the bathroom to warn Bartholomew about the imminent danger of a carpenter in the closet. But before she can reach him to explain, he opens the closet door and got a surprise of his life to find a strange man hiding in his closet. At this exact moment, Agatha, half-dressed, enters the bedroom with a very surprised look on her face. As Agatha desperately started to explain, Bartholomew interrupts her abruptly, turning to the man in the closet. He then asks, And what exactly are you doing in my closet? The carpenter, understanding the awkwardness of this scene, of a man in the closet, a half-naked wife, and a very surprised husband. He clearly understands the predicament, and he decided to go for the million-dollar answer. You will never believe me, sir. But I am waiting for the bus.
If you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.